So now that we remember a little bit about how many bonds things make, we can start to draw Lua structures. So Lua structures really are just electron dot representations of molecules. And we'll start with the rules for, for Lua structures. First, we're only going to use valence electrons. In fact, I sometimes will joke with my students that if you ask me how many electrons uh, an atom has, most of the time I'll probably get it wrong because I'm only thinking about valence electrons being an organic chemist. All organic chemistry really only happens with valence electrons, so when we're drawing those structures, all we care about are the valence electrons. We don't care about any inner shell electrons. So for example, if you think about carbon, and I would say carbon has four electrons. Well, that's true in its valence shell. Carbon has a 1s with two electrons in it, a 2s with two electrons in it, and a 2p with two electrons in it. So when I think of carbon, I think of carbon as having four electrons. It really has six, but it only has four in its valence shell. And that's what we're concerned about in organic chemistry. So usually anytime we talk about how many electrons things have, we only mean valence electrons. The next rule is that each second row element gets eight electrons. And each hydrogen gets two electrons. So if we're going to go through our steps, the first thing we're going to do is arrange the atoms. And to do that, there are some certain, certain uh, helpful tips. And that is that H and X, X is a generic for halogen, so fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, should be on the outside. because each one only makes one bond. So you can't put any of those in the middle, typically. Some of the halogens break those rules as we get into more complex molecules, but I don't think you'll see any examples of those in this class. But typically they only make one bond, so you don't want to put them in the middle when they're only going to make one bond. Next, along with that, is that we want to place atoms around others based on the number of bonds they make. So since carbon makes four bonds, typically we're going to put four things around carbon. Next, we want to count the number of electrons available. Okay, and so that's going to be the valence electrons only. And if we have a negative charge, we add an electron. If we have a positive charge, we remove an electron. And whatever the sum of all that is, that's, go that's going to be the total number of electrons you have available to draw your Lewis structure. So three, we want to arrange the electrons. And to do that, we want to form a bond between any two atoms. And then if we have remaining ones, remaining electrons can go as lone pairs to fill octets. And then here's where we add a new rule, and that is if there are any atoms remaining, that don't have an octet, we can use those lone pair electrons to form multiple bonds. And then the last thing that we want to do is assign formal charges. And to assign formal charges, we take the number of valence electrons for a given atom. And we subtract from that number of electrons owned, I'll describe that in a second, by that atom in the molecule. And if I'm going to figure out the, how many electrons they have owned, that's all of the unshared electrons, or all of the 
lone pair electrons plus one half of the bond pair electrons. So let's do a couple examples and hopefully this will make sense. So let's start with CH4. All right, if I'm going to look at CH4, I want to put hydrogens around the outside, so that means I'm going to put carbon in the middle. Carbon makes four bonds, so I can put four hydrogens around carbon. Now I need to count up the electrons. So valence electrons. Carbon has four. Hydrogen each has one. But there are four of them, so it's four times one. So I've got a total of eight electrons that I can place around this molecule. So now I want to place the electrons. So I need two electrons between each pair of atoms to form a bond. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I've already used up all my electrons. So now I want to go back and look at formal charges. So carbon has four valence electrons. So now if I look at this carbon, half of the, the bond pair electrons belong to that carbon. So this electron belongs to carbon, this one belongs to carbon, this one belongs to carbon, and this one belongs to carbon. So that's one half from each bond. So there are four electrons that belong to carbon. It has four valence electrons. There's no formal charge. You can do the same with hydrogen. hydrogen. The hydrogens each have one valence electron, and this hydrogen has one electron that belongs to it. This one has one electron. This has one electron. This one has one electron. So there's no formal charge on carbon or hydrogen. Let's try another one. Let's try C2H4. Remember, the hydrogens need to go around the outside. So C, C, H, 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 H. Okay, so I put my carbons towards the middle and I put my hydro hydrogens around the outside. Carbons each have four electrons. So I've got four times two from carbon, that's eight. Hydrogens each have one electron and I've got four hydrogens. One times four equals four. So the total is 12 electrons I need to place. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I started off by putting two electrons between each pair of atoms, and that formed a bond. But now I've got two electrons left over. Okay, and so if you have two electrons left over, or any electrons left over, you can make them as lone pairs. However, if I look at this molecule, this carbon here does not have an octet. So since that one doesn't have an octet, this is not a very good structure for this molecule. So what we should do is take this lone pair and instead turn it into a multiple bond or another bond pair. So now I've got two bonds between these two carbons. Now this carbon has one, two, three, four electrons and two, four, six, eight eight electrons around that carbon to make an octet. This carbon only had six electrons around the carbon. This one had two, four, six, eight. So this one had a full octet, but this one didn't. So now I've got two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Both carbons have a full octet, and so now the molecule is going to be stable. If we want to look at formal charges, we can again look here and say one, two, three, four. Electrons belong to that carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons, so there's no charge. One, two, three, four electrons belong to this carbon on the right. Again, no charge. And one belonging to each hydrogen, so there's no charges. So there's no formal charges again. Let's do one more example. I'll do CH3+. Plus. So again, put the carbon in the middle, put the hydrogens around the carbon. then go back to figuring out how many electrons we have. Carbon has four electrons times one. The hydrogens each have one electron, so it's three electrons from the hydrogens, so that'd be seven, except we have minus one electron because of the positive charge. So I have a total of six electrons to place. So if I start placing those around my molecule, at one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got my full six electrons already. 
and I don't have any more electrons to put to a lone pair to try and fill an octet around that carbon, so this carbon won't have an octet. And then if I start to figure out how many electrons things have, this carbon has one, two, three electrons that belong to it, so it has a plus one charge. So the formal charge on that carbon is plus one, and that's why this ion, CH3+, has a plus one charge.